The reflection for today is taken from St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 12, verse 21. In his name, the nations will put their hope. Hope is the prominent theme in the Bible. In the Old Testament, the reason of Israel's hope is Yahweh. Yahweh was faithful to his promises and his mighty deeds in the past. Testify to his power and his willingness to save and to help Israel. In the book of Exodus chapter 34 verse 6 and 7 says, The Lord passed before Moses and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for a thousand generations, forgiving iniquities and transgressions and sin. In the New Testament, the message of hope is been developed in Pauline writings. St. Paul's letter to the Romans says, By hope we are saved. Now hope that sees itself is not hope. But if we hope for what we do not see, and we wait with endurance. According to the Second Vatican Council, hope looks forward to the true life with God. Although the mystery of death utterly beggars this imagination. The Holy Mother, the Church, teaches that men and women have been created by God in view of the blessed destiny beyond the reach of the earthly misery. In the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 20 and 21 says, that our citizenship is in heaven, from where we await a Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform to His glorious body by the power that enables to bring all things into subjection to Him. Lord Jesus Christ, the Almighty and Merciful Saviour, has destroyed death, has conquered death and calls men and women to join Him and share for the divine life free from all corruption. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 54 to 57 says, Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of sin, the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory to our Lord Jesus Christ. Hope is one of the theological virtues, a supernatural gift bestowed by God to a person through which one trusts God will grant him salvation and eternal life. The Gospel of St. John chapter 3 verse 16 and 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that whoever believes in him might not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. This truth is expressed by St. Paul in his letter to the Romans, chapter 10, verse 9 and to 11. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, that God raised him from dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart leading him to righteousness, 
and one confesses with mouth leading to salvation. No one who believes in him will be put to shame. My dear brothers and sisters, any non-Christian brother or a sister from any community, any race, any culture makes this confession of faith of Romans chapter 10 verse 9 to 11 will be saved. This is the message given to us in today's gospel. Matthew chapter 12 verse 21. In his name the nations will put their hope. We have a wonderful example of this in the Acts of the Apostle. Cornelius, a Roman centurion, a devoted man who feared God with his entire household. He gave his arms generously and prayed constantly to God. God revealed him in a vision to call Peter to his home. And when Peter came to his home and proclaimed the good news of Jesus Christ, his passion, his death and his resurrection, and that everyone who believes in him will receive the forgiveness of sin through his name. And as Peter was speaking this message, the Holy Spirit came upon all who heard the word. And when Peter saw the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out on the Gentiles, he baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As Christians, we have a mission. The Holy Mother, the Church, exists to proclaim hope in this troubled world. Torn apart by sin, war, plague, sickness and suffering. Despair is a sin against hope. Despair is not necessary sin of unbelief. A person can believe in God's willingness to forgive sinners, while at the same time he thinks there is no pardon for him. Are we ready for the mission? Dear brothers and sisters, the book of Zechariah chapter 8 verse 23 says, This is what the Lord God Almighty says, In those days ten people from all languages and nations will take hold of one Jew by the hem of his robe and say to him, Let us go with you because we have heard that God is with you. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, we the Christians serve a living and a mighty God who is with us. In the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 13 to 15 says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him whom they have not believed? And how can they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preach? And how can people preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. And so my dear brothers and sisters, as Christians, we have a mission to proclaim the great hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the Holy Mother, the Catholic Church and its organizations and cells which proclaim this message of hope in this world 
through liturgy and service. Bless their efforts that they may bear fruit in abundance. This prayer we make in the most holy name of Jesus. Amen. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me.